Hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about the Vampire Empire Trilogy, an alternate history slash sci-fi fantasy steampunk romance with vampires. And you're, most people are following the whole, most of you probably following the whole Twilight thing are probably tired of romances with vampires that are, or romances with anything supernatural. But this is actually really good, mostly because of all that other stuff that I put on, you know, but <clears throat> that's add there. But um, essentially, I'll just get to this, um, you know, the setup is that in the year 1870, vampires rise up and just take over the world. And already this setting is, I'm loving this because for once we have vampires that are public, you know, most of the, most other things that I see are like vampires like ruling from the shadows and they're being all secretive and stuff. And I think that it, you know, having vampires sort of ruling just out in the open is kind of refreshing in my opinion. And, um, and, uh, and like I said, they rise up and it's this event called the Great Killing. And eventually, uh, like all of the um, normal, all of the, uh, most of the, powerful nations like United States and the European countries, you know, flee south to the equator where they're able to stay safe for reasons I'll discuss, I'll talk about later on. And, um, <clears throat> uh, well, anyway, um, eventually fast forward to the year 2020 and, you know, the humanity is sort of as uh, rebuilt itself with all sorts of cool stuff like airships and and um, you know and, and um, anyway and now they're be they're preparing to take back the north from the vampire from the collective vampire clans and this is basically where the story starts out that our trilogy starts You know, our first book, The Grey Friar, starts out about, uh, starts out with, you know, the, um, Princess Adele and her little brother, I can't remember his name, but um, anyway, um, they're on this goodwill tour towards the northern states, or the northern city-states, which is about, like, all, like, floating on the northern coast of the, on the northern coast of the Mediterranean. This is about, like, as far as you can which is about as far as uh, humanity, human civilization goes, or human controlled civilization, I should say. And um, they're getting like this whole goodwill tour thing get started. And um, you'd think that like this would be kind of dumb, but they kind of justify this by saying like, oh, well, we have our, um, like this elite white guard protecting them, but yeah, they get capped, they get taken out, but, um, before that, um, we have them in this little class room setting as they're sort of, um, kind of giving us our little exposition on, um, first, of course, is the, uh, physiology of the vampires, which I, which you'll find is different, but I think it's different in a good way. First off is, um, I mean, sometimes some good, some bad, but, um, but like, but, um, first off is, um, I should, guess I should say the biggest, um, I'll just bring up, like, first part is, uh, science vamp, they're science-based, kind of, so holy water crosses are out, and, um, which I always thought that was kind of stupid, and, um, I kind of laughed at there, there was this moment in a, I was, like, talk about it, um, there was Dusk Till Dawn 2, or one of the dust where they get like a shotgun and they get like a stick and they just make like their own little crosses and I mean heck you could you think about it it's kind of you could probably just drive off a vampire by doing this and but um so I thought I always thought that was a good it was kind of stupid but um anyway um there is um Another change is which is uh, sunlight. Now I I I kind of like this. I think it's really clever because um, you know I find that m one thing that's kind of annoying about the vampires and most other you know 
mediums and stories is that they take the whole vampire, no vampires in sunlight way too literally and um, instead you'll have like, you use this like sort of loophole where the vampire would basically be running around in sunlight anyway but they'll be like, oh no no it's cool because um, I'm uh, wearing really heavy clothing that blocks the sun or um, yeah, or standing in a shady spot or it's cloudy out, or... Like, I think I already talked about this in Dracula, but, um, yeah. Anyway, um... But what I think that was clever about this is that it's not the sun's light that hurts the vampires, it's the sun's heat. You know, um... Yeah, it means they could, theoretically, they could, uh, run around in daylight, in, like, winter or fall or a cold day, but... It also means that, for the most part, if it's, like, really hot out, then they're not going to be setting foot outside at all, or being anywhere active at all. doesn't matter if they're standing in a shady spot or anything. Plus, it, it provides a better reason for why the people living on along the equator have been able to, you know, survive and rebuild, because it's just too damn hot for the vampires to be able to handle, or handle comfortably any and um, then of course there's another there's one thing that I wasn't really all that crazy about which was the um, um, one thing that I'm kind of not I don't necessarily think it's good or bad but in this one vampires are living creatures whereas in most others uh, vamp vampirism is more of like a plague you know like a disease you know, because, um, you know, you vampire bites someone, that person becomes infected with vampirism and becomes another vampire. And as a result of this, you know, vampires kind of have to kill uh, humans, but because um, otherwise that person's going to rise up as another vampire. But, um, yeah, like I said, in this one, they're not really like a disease or anything they're more they're just living beings which means a the you don't really necessarily need to stab them in the heart with the wooden stake you could just stab them in any vital organ or um, or anything like that I mean they're harder to kill but that's um, but you know they're still like just pump them full of lead with a machine gun they're gonna go down shoot up chop off their head, you know. And then there's, um, there's, like, the fact that they can't turn humans into other vampires. And, um, I think that I thought was, was uh, kind of funny was, um, like, well, then how do they make more vampires? And I'm just kind of watching this thinking, gee, how do you think they make other vampires? Do you think it might involve, uh, let's say, with a guy vampire and a girl vampire love each other very much, you know. <laughs> but, um, and there's, um, like, um, there are senses, like, um, the reason why it's harder to kill them, even though they're still living beings, is because, like, most of their sense, like, their sense of touch has been sort of deafened. I mean, all of their other senses hide, I mean, um, you know, sight, hearing, you know, and so forth. They've been, but like, uh, feeling and has been sort of deafened so they can, like, take more abuse. And when they suck human blood, which, and then it sort of helps them heal faster. But, um, anyway, uh, like, another thing they talk about, um, is this badass called, uh, the Grey Friar. Of course, none of the humans that. Uh, of course, none of the humans know that the Grey Friar is actually the Vampire Prince Gareth. Yeah, that that's not really much of a spoiler. They're, it's not like they're trying to make it a twist or anything. It's just kind of like a superhero thing, you know. You know, Gareth doesn't want anybody to know that. All right, I'm getting, getting far ahead of myself. Um, the uh, their airship is captured. The prince the air is, and, is, and crashes and so forth. Most of the people, like, most of the people with names survive, but, um, um, 
Princess Adele is captured, taken up north to England, and he's like almost going to be held by Caesar, but um, or Caesar, or whatever. But he's eventually, she's taken to, and she's held in. Um, Gareth decides to hold her for, and um, she eventually finds out that the Grey Friar is Prince Gareth, and, and I know this is like I think this is like some sort of big spoiler, but not really. I mean, it's pretty much like um, they're they're not like trying to keep this like a twist or anything. It's just like um, like saying, is it really much of a twist if you spoil that Batman is really Bruce Wayne? You know. <laughs> but um yeah and you find out that like he actually kind of the reason why he becomes he became the gray friar is because like over the years he's seen his fellow vampires become all decadent and sloppy and so forth and he's kind of went becoming disgusted with them but then looking at the humans and seeing that them they build all this the airships and they're building their empire back collective empires back up then um then like um <clears throat> oof, I forgot the other another character is um Senator Clark he's like supposed to be patrolled but and you're thinking you're probably thinking oh this is some sort of stupid love triangle thing not really the only reason he wants to marry her is for like political power but anyway um he eventually comes up saves her Although, much like in Beauty and the Beast fashion, she falls in love with Prince Gareth. But, um... You know... It, <clears throat> and event, But eventually, like... After this big climactic battle with, um... You know, the, the Gareth the disguised as the Grey Friar and helping, you know, fight Cess... Uh, Cesar and his subordinate Flay and, you know, helping, you know, um, Adele get back to Senator Clark and they go off and, you know, <clears throat> it's a happy ending. And, you know, th this is kind of like um, Star Wars. You know, the, the first one is sort of not necessarily in a bubble, but, you know, it's more self-contained while the other two are more closely connected. And for the first first installment of a trilogy, I like this. You know, there's uh, some good action. The characters are likable and so are likable and sympathetic. And um, like like I said, I just really enjoy this. But um, anyway, uh, uh, moving on to book two. Now, uh, book two, the called Rift Walker, basically, um, well, before I talk about the book, I'd just, like talk about the cover. This is the one time that I'd like to talk about the actual cover of a book. So right now is, um, no, basically the cover is a complete lie. Like, um, when you look at it, you see, um, you know, Princess Adele sort of lying lying down and the gray friar is going off to like fight or something I don't know but um, <clears throat> but most of the time it's actually the other way around but I, I'll get to but um, anyway um, that's actually um, <clears throat> it starts out with um, about like a few months after the events of the first book and um, one thing that I thought was kind of funny is, um, like, um, since that time, like, this whole wave of uh, Greyfriar sl slash Adele, you know, stuff has been popping up, like, plays, books, and so forth. And most of the time I thought it was funny. And um, one thing that I especially thought was funny is um, the Senator Clark. Um, is, is um, it, Princess Adele is asking like um, hey, where's a uh, Senator Clark and all this? He's he kind of helped save me, like, you know. And he, I mean, yeah, Greyfriar protected me, but you know, um, this um, 
Senator Clark is the one who, like, actually came in and brought me back home, so why isn't he in here? It's like, oh, no, no, we, we don't bring him up because, like, he complicates things and so forth. Um, and I thought I was got a chuckle out of, like, poor Clark. But, um, anyway, um, eventually, like, you know, she's been stalling because she doesn't want to get married. And, um, we eventually learn that, um, you know, like, the method of for taking out all the vampires is by, um, not by, like, is actually by uh, mostly destroying their food supply, killing humans, and that would cause, like, genocide. And when she learns this, and then she really doesn't want to get married to Clark. And, um, for, and then, um, furthermore, um, the one bad guy, uh, Prince Cesar, is, um, is, um, you know, like planning an assassination of the entire royal family of the Equatorian Empire and um, so like the the first attempt is like during the wedding during which she's uh, saved last second by the Greyfriar or aka Prince Gareth or secretly Prince Gareth and um, you know they get away but um, and like they flee south like as far south and they go to like um, this African country of Katanga or whatever I don't know and um, you know they're like hey can you help me out with um, these vampires and really the, they're like okay and they help him out and um, like it's real the, um, like the stuff concerning them going south and you know helping this other foreign nation is really mostly like fluff it doesn't really result in anything other than like Princess Adele developing further um, <clears throat> in the field of this thing called a geomancy. Now apparently it's um, I don't really get how it works you know I think it has something to do with um, I think it is um, something about the magnetic fields of the planet and ley lines and rifts I don't know I just don't it's just confusing but, um, apparently it elevates, you know, Princess Adele from the Disney princess that you were probably thinking about in, when I was talking about her in, uh, you know, the first book, and it goes from, you know, Disney princess to more Mary Sue-ish, and she's, and she pretty much wipes out that whole group of vampires, you know, just kills every one of them, and even comes close to killing Gareth. And like I said, um, <clears throat> earlier about sunlight being, um, it was actually the sun's heat that harms them. And like, so yeah, the, throughout the, most of the thing, you know, you know, Gareth, <clears throat> aka Greyfriar is being, um, you know, just, uh, like barely being able to move, only being able to run around like at night or so forth. And, um. Like, the real story comes in, um, is, like, little bits and pieces back in, um, the capital. And, you know, they, they didn't succeed in, uh, killing Princess Adele or her little brother, but, uh, they did succeed in killing the king, the emperor. And, um, like, when, once that happened, you know, it became, like, a race to find Adele, so Senator Clark and, and the Equatorial... Equatorian General Anhalt and go um, they go looking for Adele and they find her you know manage bring her back and um, yeah there's uh, plenty of uh, then but and once that happens once everyone gets back um, his um, <clears throat> Cesar's um, main general uh, second hand General uh, Flay, who's um, a <clears throat> rather cool character, I think. Uh, you know, essentially, like, it's funny, is, um, she's, uh, they describe her as, like, running around with the jet black hair, thigh high boots, and um, pa white pants, and so forth, and, like, she runs around, like, bare breasted, so, yeah, this, and you know, it's kind of, I just kind of, like, 
You can, like, <laughs> um, you know, whenever she, like, runs around, I just can't help but picture that. But uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> the, um, anyway, but, like, um, but eventually, um, like, she finds out who the Grey, who Greyfriar's secret identity is Prince Gareth. They, um, and, um, you know, the Equatorians, they pretty much say, we don't want anything to do with the American Republic and their little genocide thing against, you know, by killing the humans. You know, we want to save the humans who are being held by the vampires. You're living under the vampire rules. And, um, and it pretty much ends with war breaking out and leading into book three, uh, The Kingmakers. You know, book three, The Kingmakers, starts out with a pretty epic battle, in my opinion. You know, um, the soldiers are running through trenches and the Grey Friars sort of leading the charge against the vampires and and um and of and of course the human soldiers with the aid of the Grey Friar win. And um you know and it just tells you about um <clears throat> essentially the the war has taken its pretty big toll. And um <clears throat> And well, essentially, what you get is that um, this is where the shit gets real, you know, where everything gets, you know, more. There, the stakes are much higher than before, and um, <clears throat> for the most part, you know. Uh, hmm. You know, it just um, like I said, it's just overall more epic, you know. You know, there's, um, although it does kind of dip into kind of ridiculousness sometimes, um, like, even though most steampunk is pretty cool, there's this moment where they find, um, somebody builds, like, a, a troop of, like, uh, mech, mech suits, and, like, uh, normally I would, but, um, I would have been, like, okay with it, but I'm just kind of disappointed we never see them really ever again. We just see them, like, once when they, um, uh, there's this um, thing where the soldiers are getting beaten up by like um, what's the attrition attrition and um, the like the vampires that's how they're kind of driving them back and um, but eventually Adele comes and they have this whole encounter where they're trying to take Grenoble I think it's Grenoble yeah and um, and she used her, like, geomancy powers to save the day and kill, like, all the vampires in there. But, um, she eventually kind of feels, like, some regret because, really, you're killing all of the vampires, women and children, you know. But, um, I don't really think about it that much because he, even she doesn't really think about it that much. But, um, anyway, um, um... It was, um, I really, it's kind of hard for me to talk about stuff without, you know, like, really big spoilers, but, um, well, it's last book, so, of course, all of the bad guys die and so forth, but, um, <clears throat> like, um, <clears throat> like, I just, um, for the most part, like I said, I like it, but the one part that I really wasn't too crazy about was the ending like um like uh, it just felt like too much stuff was just ended way too conveniently like first off is um this uh the geomancy basically this is um this just just automatic vampire killer and um what it nails in constantly over and over again hammering it in every chance it gets at um like this is that geomancy is like toxic to vampires if um and whenever Adele uses her geomancy powers to higher and higher extents that um you know like Gareth can't even go anywhere near her and um and at the end it's like oh no I love you 
and that and for some reason it doesn't work on him anymore for no reason you know feels like just an excuse to have a happy ending with the human and vamp human and the per vampire lover gareth you know living happily ever after and stuff and you know um then there's um the whole uh they bring up the ethics of the whole using geomancy to wipe out all the vampires, you know. And even that doesn't seem to be brought up as much as I would have liked, you know. <clears throat> and there are quite a few other things, but, um, like, aside from the ending, for the most part, I really enjoyed it, you know. There's, you know, some good humor where it belonged and there is lots of intense action you know this book had or the whole trilogy had lots of good action that I thought it was just enjoyable and um, and like despite the kind of lackluster ending in my opinion I felt this overall trilogy was very entertaining you know lots of intense action plenty of uh, likable sympathetic characters it's just an overall good read anyway um and like so like i said four out of five stars and um anyway um till next time uh have a nice day and see you later